Okay, I've chosen another picture that I think is going to really suit our needs well. So let's just go to the eyes real quick here. And I have mentioned, maybe not all of you have gotten it, but if you have a person looking at you, you want to be able to have the irises round. And so this is quite close, but you could still kind of tweak it a little bit. The more care you take, remember if, if you aren't, aren't sure whether what you have here represents a circle, you can go ahead and go outside the lids just temporarily to see if this is part of a circle. And so I, I think we could probably do just a little bit more tweaking there. But now the next element is you want to have the pupil in directly in the center. And uh, this here is off to one side. You see this large space here and the little space here. So let's go ahead and remove that. Let's go ahead and redirect this out here, getting it in the center, really establishing focus. This is that, that wonderful opportunity we have to engage everyone that looks at it. Even though there's several people in the room, they can all feel like they're, they're making eye contact. Now remember, I'm just making this with a lot of strokes. I don't want to draw a circle and just fill it in. For whatever reason, uh, even if you may see it a little more of an exact edge on the pupil than what uh, I'm showing here. This works very well. And let's go ahead and now talk about having this get darker as it goes to where there's less light. Most of what I'm going to show you on this picture is this, and so I want you to think about it your tendency is going to have this be a little darker when it went to where there's less light. I also want to have a clean edge, which is good here. Good separation. You have a great opportunity for dimensional, uh, a dimensional edge that separates the two elements. But now let's go ahead and shade this down. We need a little color in here anyway to do a good job on a highlight. Now I want to make sure that everything that went to where there's less light up underneath that eyelid and I want to maintain that clean edge. So now let's go ahead and make sure that everything, see this white isn't fading down. I'm going to fade that down as well. Not as dark as the iris, but I still want to show that everything that goes to where there's less light gets a little darker. Now I'm going to pump up this, I hope, a little bit more because our pupils are usually just about the darkest place on our body. But now I'm going to make this a little darker at the top because it's going into where it's shaded. Okay. Now I would like to take some emphasis off of, and this is a very, very common thing too. I know some of you ladies would put eyeliner on and things, but if we're looking at this thing in a natural way, this, this line is not going to be dark. So let's go ahead and back that off. And this is where we want to bring focus out here a little farther away from that edge. So we can go ahead and actually put a little color in the eye in the white and make that an edge to value instead of a, a definite line. Now I'm always trying to get rid of any line I can. Okay so let's go on past that and let's make that a little darker and so on. I want to be able to think about this as well. These uh, uh, Hair strokes, I think, may have been uh, uh, because of trying to do the strokes very perfectly. But I like to gather my strokes and not, not just go like this, where they're all parallel and in rows. I like to be able to gather them and have a fulcrum point or you know, a place where they fan out from. And then the other thing is, I really like the fact that this is a nice clean line here, or clean edge, we've separated the face from the hair. But then in doing that, I'm gonna create my buffer zone, and I am going to create a shadowing, like some of you call it, but a gradation, 
starting where it gets darker, where it's going, where there's less light and coming out lighter, lighter, lighter. And it gives me a buffer zone. It gives me a place that I can pull my hair from instead of having this happen. If I had that cheek and I'm going to try to do it without a buffer zone and I want to get it up close, I'm going to be intersecting that line and uh, you know not meeting it exactly and or else I'll be down here somewhere because I'm afraid I'm going to bring my strokes too close to that and I don't want to uh, hit that line. So that buffer zone is good but when you do that you want to be able to come now to the darkest place and the tapered stroke is perfect for this and meet that edge. Now I want to be able to think about my layers. Where is it going to be darker? Probably going to be darker here. So let me go ahead and create another little buffer zone here, just for the sake of illustration here. Let's create another level, something farther back in there where there's less light. Creating my buffer zone again, where it's darker at the extreme, and then it comes out lighter, 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 and now I can pull out of it. But one of the things I want to be able to do is I want to make sure that it's darker. All these strokes that you can see down here, if they're darker here, uh, when they come up here, I want them to be a little darker yet. I want to be able to see that gradation go right into the where it gets darker. Okay. Now, let's just say this is a different layer. I want this behind this. I want this behind that. So I'll go ahead and create a little bit of a buffer zone here. Now we're going to go ahead and not go this dark, or I can come back in and make it darker again, but I'm going to now layer this over the top of that. This is farther back. It needs to be a little darker than this. This one needs to be a little darker than this one. And I can use common sense and say, where would it be darker? Let's see, where would it be? Well, it'd probably be darker right up in here. It'd probably be darker right up in here. It'd be, you know, possibly darker back here. Maybe this looks a little bit too much of a line here. Let's go ahead and show this a little farther away, especially where the the uh, curve of up above her eye and around the side is probably a little deeper here. The shadow would be wider. And then it gets farther away here. Maybe it's touching here. And it's farther away there. Now, if we have everything getting darker, then if we're doing eyebrows, we want to be able to show that as they went around behind the hair and or at that, that side of the face, that they got a little darker. And then if I, if I realize the eyebrow may go by here, back here a ways, I can maybe show that the hair isn't that thick and I can see it a little bit through here. It's what I call peekaboos, not a very masculine term, but just being able to see it through the hair now makes this something other than just a solid chunk and gives it a little bit of an airy feeling. So now a couple more things. We could keep going with the same principle. This this line here along the chin, uh, we could make sure that this neck isn't going to be that bright underneath there. It's probably the last place it would be that bright unless there's some reflective light or, or something. But let's just assume that it's going to where there's less light. My darkest point would be right up underneath and it would come out lighter, lighter, lighter as it comes back into where there's more, more light. Okay, so I appreciate the person that sent this in. Great uh, uh, drawing and effort here, and uh, it gave me a chance again to show you some very uh, uh, common things that I think a lot of you will benefit from, and uh, hope you have fun.